Welcome to my latest project. This is an open source echolot, fish finder, depth finder, sonar, whatever you want to call it. In this video, I want to share my current state of the development process and the first software and hardware tests. The goal is to build a fully open source sonar, hardware and software that you can copy and use for your own projects. Because I found it very hard to get Arduino readable echolots or depth finders for some of my other projects like the depth mapping project. And I had to use these very expensive and almost impossible to get enemy R183 capable depth finders. This is the DS41 from Stunt Horizon and I had to ask a friend from the US to buy it there and ship it to me to get my hands on one of those. The cool thing about these is that they directly output an NMEA 183 signal. You can read with your Arduino or microcontroller platform of your choice very easily, but that's not the case for most Echolos or Fish Finders on the market, especially in the lower price range. To start with the project, I decided to buy one of these very cheap Fish Finders you get for 30 euros or something and read the data directly from the board itself. After some research on the internet, I found uh, at least two projects where they did something similar, but the documentation was not very great. So I had to find some stuff out myself using the oscilloscope. And these fish finders are actually quite simple. So in the middle, you have this large microcontroller and on the top you, or in this case on the left, you have all the um, signal processing for the uh, transducer circuit. On the bottom, you have a signal generator with a 200 kilohertz square wave signal uh, that drives uh, um, transducer. My fish finder didn't come with one, so I had to come up with my own solution. And this is just a eight euro transducer from AliExpress. I sold it two wires to it, uh, put it in a film box, submerged it in oil and sealed everything off with some hot glue. And this works surprisingly well underwater, so this seems to be promising. To understand and reverse engineer the circuit, I took two pictures of both sides of the PCB of the fish finder, put it in Figma and traced all the PCB traces and wrote down every component I could find. Um, but I'm still missing some diodes and capacitor values, so I still need to put some work into that. But I think I understand how this works and I think I can use this as an inspiration for my own design. I put everything in KiCad um, and attached all the components of this to understand what's actually going on and to find to make some educated guesses on the capacitor values and the diode values. Because this is actually just a large drive circuit using a transistor and a big amplification circuit that amplifies the returning signal. This is the board from the fish finder and in the middle you have a large microcontroller that drives the LCD and all the amplification circuit and the drive circuit for the transducer. On the top you have this large amplification and drive circuitry for the transducer. On the bottom you have some voltage regulation and the 200 kHz signal generator to drive the transducer. I'm not sure why they use this external circuit and not a PWM signal because this microcontroller should be capable of generating such a fast signal. At least the Atmega328 is capable of doing so. Um, I'm not sure why they do it. The rest are just some components to support the microcontroller and the amplification circuitry. And on the backside we have three buttons, the buzzer and the display. A little bit hard to show on camera, but uh, this is a square wave signal of 200 kilohertz from the signal generator. This one is the trigger signal, which is 100 microseconds long on this pin. I will put everything in the uh, GitHub repository. And this one is the return signal, the amplified return signal from the transducer that gets read from the analog in pin on the microcontroller. And it changes when I put my finger on the transducer um, or remove it and in the water it also shows the reflection of the object the echo comes from. To read the data and send it to the computer, I use one of my fast logic boards and attach the trigger output from the fish finder to a trigger input on the fast logic board and the amplified return signal to an analog pin on the fast logic board slash Arduino board. The code on the fast logic side is also not very complicated. We just start by listening to the trigger input and on a falling edge, we start the sampling process. The sampling is just a for loop that listens uh, for 100 samples to the analog input and writes all the analog values directly into the array. Uh, because the Atmega has a limited uh, processing speed, we have a sampling speed of around 112 microseconds per sample. And this equals to around 16 centimeters of sound speed inside water, which is in turn equal to around 8 centimeters of resolution to the depth because we have both directions. 
And this is how we get around eight meters of water depth uh, covered with this approach. But we can also increase the sample size, but uh, after around 60 or 70 meters, we hit the limit of the Atmega 3208 with this sampling size. After the sample has been captured, we send it using serial and send it to the computer backend. For the backend, I wrote a small Python script that shows the data in a waterfall chart in real time so we can watch all the data and the historical data from the past few seconds. And to test my board in real life, I actually had to leave my desk. But we have the Baltic Sea very close by, so it was just a five minute bike ride. I then had to check the water quality and it looked great. And also check how the ground looks. Indeed, it's looking good. And remember this letter because I later found it on the sonar picture. You won't believe me how excited I was to see this little line. I then increased the gain a little bit on the back end. And now you can clearly see the reflection of the echo of the ground of the Baltic Sea floor. Then I again increased the gain and removed the transducer from the water to see if it's actually like real readings. And you can clearly see that inside the water there are clear readings and above the water there is no reading. When you take the transducer and tilt it and shoot the beam horizontally to the ladder, you can see that the ladder is further away than the bottom. Now I'm moving the assembly closer to the ladder and you can clearly see that the return signal comes back faster than before. And this is definitely a sign that the assembly is working and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> What I also found out that I find very cool is when you put the transducer on the floating dock and connect the transducer directly to this aluminum beam, the echo gets uh, tra transmitted directly through the beam into the water and you can even see a double reflection of the ground. So two lines because uh, the signal is bouncing two times between the uh, floating dock and the bottom and you can receive both of the echoes which is very cool I think. And I think even if I would increase the sample size, you could see even more, which is very cool. But this also shows that the current transducer is not optimal. So probably it makes sense to attach the transducer to a horn of some kind, uh, but I don't know really how to calculate that, but maybe uh, just attach a large aluminum plate or something to the bottom. The next day I wanted to take some more horizontal measurements to see if I can see the chains of the buoys or the wall on the right side. So I attached the prop to this wooden stick and put it in the water but unfortunately it started to rain quite a bit and all the electronics got wet and I had to uh, go home. Unfortunately the electronics don't really amplify the signal anymore when they are wet so I had to dry them with a hairdryer but it gives a quite a funny picture on the waterfall diagram. But I think for the first test this is pretty promising and I think we can move on from there. Now the next big question is how to move on with this project. I think the next big step is to build the PCBs and get the electronics ready to get them manufactured. Also I'm not sure what form factor it will have in the end. If it's just an Arduino shield or maybe a dedicated board with the SEM32 for example on board that has some processing capabilities or maybe even a display you can um, read the data from or maybe a USB connector you can plug to, into your computer to read the data from there. I'm not really sure 
about that. I'm also not sure if chirp, for example, could be a possible feature in the future because um, the modulation frequency could be generated from the microcontroller. So this could be very interesting. So if you have any thoughts on that and ideas or um, improvements or some wishes or anything, um, give this a comment. If you like this, give it a like. And if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, a subscription or a GitHub star or whatever. Thank you for watching. Bye. High quality engineering, great transducer oil.